Hi, this is Jim Janesey. This is chapter 12 of the Gombrich textbook, The Story of Art. This chapter is entitled The Conquest of Reality, and it deals with Europe, primarily Italy, in the 1400s. So what's been going on since the 1300s? Well, for one thing, the era of cathedral building is over. Cathedrals are not being built in the same numbers as they were in years past, and architects are applying their skills, some of them still using Gothic decoration techniques, and others using newer techniques, becoming prominent in the Renaissance. This man, Brunelleschi, Filippo Brunelleschi, has an awful lot to do with both architecture and art in this period. The main thing we're going to look at here is new techniques of creating realism. That involves both detail and perspective. And we're going to see how these come together. Lots of progress being made in the tools used for painting. Now here we have a look at old Florence, that is, Florence of this era, which still exists today. In fact, I took this picture, it's a panoramic picture, and I'm standing on the Piazza Michelangelo across the Arno River from Florence. This is the most prominent feature, it's the Duomo, the cathedral for which Brunelleschi built the dome. And we'll take a closer look at that. There's some other things we're going to take a look at around here also in Florence. Here is the dome. This magnificent dome structure. It's very large. You can tell by looking at the size of the people down here. They're very tiny in comparison to this dome. A dome like this had not been engineered since the time of the Romans. This church was built in the 1400s. And in fact, this part of the church had been built much earlier. And although... The original architect, who had long since died, had planned on this sort of a dome being erected here. He didn't know how to design it. Nobody did. And there was a competition in the early 1400s for a way to do that. And Brunelleschi was in competition for it, and he actually came up with a way to do it. It wasn't possible to build this sort of a dome as if it were an arch, and to support it underneath with false work until the stone could be set in place. So... It's an interesting thing how he built it without any supports and it just rose and it rose and went up. That will be the subject of an extra credit problem for you to figure that out. Now also in Florence and standing there before the church had ever been built is this building here called the Baptistry. It's an octagonal building as you can see here. It's got this kind of a funny shape to it. It's a very interesting building. The doors are panels that have been decorated in a very special way by very noted sculptors and architects. This also figures in a very big way in Brunelleschi's learning about linear perspective. So there's a reading associated with this unit that I'd like you to take a look at that talks about this very building which was standing in the time of Brunelleschi in the 1400s already and it figures very prominently in how he drew a picture of this and checked it out to be very accurate according to reality and then use that as a tool to figure out how perspective works, how a vanishing point works. Now here's more about the cathedral. You can see it's heavily encrusted with decorations. It's got statues along in here. And very much like the cathedral in Siena, it's got decorations all over the place with very ornate rose windows, in fact, in several places. So this is a precursor to Renaissance design. Here we see a resumption of some of the earlier forms. This looks like a pointed arch, and it's, it's, it's just barely pointed, but it's turning back into a round arch, which was a throwback to the time of the, the Greeks and the Romans. And we see here the use of some types of pillars here, which was also coming back in the resumption of Greek and Roman architecture. Now this campanile... This large bell tower was designed by Giotto when he was a very old man, and it was carried on after his death. And it's interesting because it does have Gothic decoration, but not in the same way of tracery, but with different colors of marble here. And it's got a very interesting series of carvings all the way around uh, depicting the history of man. So this was built separate. It is separate from the church, although obviously it looks like the bell tower for the church. Here is the inside of the church. Once again, you can see, based on the scale here, here's people standing there, and you can see how very tall this structure is. It's a very large building. 
Now, interestingly enough, the floor underneath here is hollow. It's hollow for almost the entire church, and Brunelleschi's tomb was discovered in this area with some steps that go down there now in this area, and you could actually go down there and look across a fence and see this place where the man is buried so many years ago, the, the genius who came up with the way to build this. And just another view inside of the church. This area here is the area of the dome. The dome is up there. Now here's a map, and uh, the reason I'm pointing this out to you is that a number of things in chapter 12 refer to Florence. Florence is a very old city. This is the Duomo here. That's that cathedral we were looking at. This is the church of Santa Maria Novella. And this is where Masaccio's fresco resides. An awful lot of things here. Very famous artwork, uh, Michelangelo and others. There's also here in one of the museums, the David. And the place where I stood taking that picture is here, the Piazzale Michelangelo. And I was looking in this direction here at the cathedral. Another thing that's going to come up, though, in these slides, it's going to come up rather rapidly, this funny-shaped building here. You see, it's kind of U-shaped here, here, and then here. We're going to be standing right about here and taking a look in this direction here. Now, one other point thing I'd like to point out is the Piazza del Piti. This is a palace that uh, was used by the Medicis. And there's a bridge here, the Ponte Vecchio, that actually is a covered walkway going right into it from where in the Uffizi, the Uffizi Gallery is where the Medicis had their offices, and then they can get back to their residence here just by walking across without actually being exposed. Anyway, that's old Florence with the train station coming in in this way. And it's not a very large area. You could walk all of this very, very quickly. Here are the doors of the baptistry. They're decorated with these types of bronze cast panels. And famous artists, including Ghiberti, designed doors for the baptistry. So that definitely is something to see if you go to Florence. And some of those are illustrated in the Gombrich textbook also. Now, once again, inside the baptistry, this is an old structure. And associated with the leaving the Middle Ages behind and the coming of the Renaissance is something in the way of the posing of images like this. Here's Jesus, and once again, he's looking down at you. In fact, here's another image of a saint looking down at you. This idea of being observed is something we'll explore in a little while. But notice that this has a lot of the trappings of the very old Byzantine artwork, the way that this, this cloth is draped around the knees and such. This building is older than the Renaissance, and this artwork, these mosaics, depict that earlier style of the Middle Ages.